Hello and welcome to the Seth Joyner Show. Slowly but surely, the Philadelphia Eagles are finding their flow and rounding into shape. The defense is becoming more and more dominant with each passing week. The offense is figuring out ways to combat the adjustments that defenses have made to them over the offseason. And dare I say, the special teams are for the first time in Nick Sirianni's tenure looking somewhat special. It's time for my breakdown. Although the offense and Jalen Hurts in today's offense-driven league is the focal point, I'd be remiss in my analysis if I did not start with the defense this week. Given the number of injuries that have plagued the secondary and the linebacker group, Sean Desai has this group playing at close to an elite level. It all starts with the D-line and particularly the interior defensive tackles. While the hype surrounding Jalen Carter is warranted, Jordan Davis is growing up right before our very eyes. Both he and Carter are so dominant that neither can effectively be double teamed. All night, they lived in Tampa Bay's backfield, shutting down the run and collapsing the pocket around Baker Mayfield. Fletcher Cox, Milton Williams, and Marlon Tui Pelotu gave the Bucks nothing all game. The linebackers have complemented the D-line well. Both are yielding a paltry 48 yards per game and a measly three yards per carry over the first three games of the season. After yielding back-to-back 300-plus yard games and averaging three and a half touchdowns over the first two games, they held Baker Mayfield to 146 yards and one touchdown and one interception. The return of Bradbury and Blankenship was a huge boost, but the slot will continue to be a question mark with Maddox done for the year and Sidney Brown going down with a thigh injury. The D-line sacked Baker twice and harassed him all game. Overall, the defense held Tampa Bay's offense to a total of 174 yards while forcing two turnovers. The offense has been the hot topic over the last three weeks. While the run game has emerged as the engine of the offense early on, the passing game began to awaken out of hibernation for the first time in 2023. Jalen Hurts, for the most part, had a solid an encouraging day passing, with the exception of the two ill-advised interceptions. He was 23 for 37 for 277 yards, one pass and touchdown, one rushing touchdown, and only one sack. Now, that's a big deal. He averaged over three and a half sacks a game over the previous two games. I get the sense that the extra time gave Nick Sirianni, Brian Johnson, and Jalen Hurts some extra time to come up with answers with regards to the passing game. The Bird's commitment to the run game and the move away from the read option and RPOs seem to be working. Swift had another stellar outing, 16 runs for 130 yards for an average of 8.1 yards per carry. And overall, the Bird's racked up another 200-yard rushing day on 40 carries. A.J. Brown had nearly half of the passing yards as he had 14 targets, 9 catches for 130 yards averaging 14 yards per reception. This sort of run-to-pass balance when an offense is struggling is oftentimes exactly what the doctor ordered. Bit by bit, this offense is finding its footing. They've completely controlled the line of scrimmage the last two weeks. For the year, the Birds' offense is averaging 187 yards per game rushing and dominating the time of possession, 36 minutes and 10 seconds to 23 minutes in 50 seconds. That's almost a full 13-minute advantage. With so many weapons at Jalen Hurts' disposal, it's got to be a tough task to keep everybody happy. But as long as they keep stacking the Ws, everybody should be happy. Special teams-wise, Britton Covey had his most productive day as a returner. Although he had a 52-yard punt return, he averaged 27 yards per return and had one kickoff for 30 yards. Those are some very impressive numbers if he can keep that up. Jake Elliott continued his hot streak. He was 3 for 3 from 36, 38, and 26 yards on field goals. Overall, this may not be the perfect win they've been striving for, but they're figuring out how to get better each and every week in all three phases of the game. And if they can continue to do that, stack wins, avoid injuries to key players, By week five or six, they should be hitting on all cylinders by the time they get to the toughest part of their schedule. That's my week three breakdown. On the other side of this break, co-host of the Marks and Reese show on WIP, Ike Reese is here to talk the Birds 3-0 start and the upcoming NFC East matchup, Commanders versus the Eagles.
when you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence and underdogs covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the birds. I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! At Revolution X, we know that fortunes are made in times of uncertainty. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with the 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax, maximize the gain. Welcome back. Joining me now is my fellow linebacker brethren, from Eagle, revered WIP talk show personality, Ike Reese. Ike, <laughs> welcome, my brother. What's up, Hammer? Hey, listen, that was a pretty good introduction, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, I, you, you know I'll take care of you here, man. No yeah. doubt about it. All right, so let's jump into it. After a convincing 25-11 to 11 victory on Monday night, do you anticipate that the tension will ease around this Philadelphia football team this week. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, both of us are laughing at, as you're asking that question. Um, I expect some of it to die down. I think the team looked better last night. They, they've looked gradually better each game, but there are obviously some still some things they need to clean up, particularly in the red zone, right? Everybody was worried about the passing game. Let's, let's not beat around the bush. The elephant in the room is what's wrong with the passing game. I thought the pass, passing game showed some promise uh, against Tampa Bay. They moved the ball. You know, Jalen Mason, nice throw. I know he had two interceptions. And I think one of them was sort of a miscommunication between he and DeAndre Swift. And then the other, you want to give Tampa Bay's defense credit for making that other interception. But the biggest thing for me, Seth, coming out of there, if I was looking for anything that needs to be cleaned up or concerns, you can't go one for five in the red zone. Mm -hmm. You, you, you got to put touchdowns on the board. You can't kick field goals. All right, so it seems that Sirianni and Johnson have a remedy for the slow start. Do you think it's purely swift in the running game, or do you think it's more of them going to a more conventional offense and moving away from so much of the RPO and the read option? I think that's what it is, Seth. Uh, you know what it is, man. These defensive coordinators, you give them – six to eight months in the off season to try to figure out how to solve uh, uh, problems that offices are giving them, they're going to come up with the answers. And that's what we've sort of seen in the first three weeks. And it's, it's, it's not that teams are shutting down the Eagles completely offensively, but that aspect of the game through three weeks, we haven't seen. I'm talking about the RPO aspect of the game. We just haven't seen it be effective. Jalen hasn't been as effective 
as a runner this year as we've seen him in years past. And it seems like defenses are coming geared in towards stopping the RPO. And so what to the point you just made, I like that Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson have said, you know what, the counter to that is we're going to do a little bit of conventional running of the football, running the offense. And that has caught teams off guard. Okay, so how impressed are you? We're going to talk about the defense right quick. How impressed are you with the defense? You mentioned Davis and Carter. Um, the, the emergence of those two, the linebackers, although statistically you don't see it, they played well. And these young DBs that have been pressed into action due to injuries. Let me start with Sean Desai. Um, he, he hasn't get, been given his full complimentary of players for consecutive weeks so that he can figure out what they're great at doing and what they're not so good at doing. So I want to give him props for being able to adjust on the fly. Uh, and, and, and you got some subs going in there having to fill in. So it's not ideally for him, but I thought they played their best defensive game against Tampa Bay through the air and on the ground. We know um, the first two weeks of the season, you know, over 300 and some yards passing per game, that's not going to suffice in this league as a defense. You can't have that. They got that fixed for the Tampa game. And you also, they've been a great run defense with those young guys up front. Several players stepping up, Seth. All right, Ike. So, Washington, this team, the Eagles should beat them. I think we all agree. But you know these NFC East games, they're always unpredictable battles, man. Uh, what's your keys to a victory on Sunday versus Washington? Respect your opponent. That's my number one key. Uh, the Eagles were 8-0 last year. Washington came in here and beat them. I believe it was on a Monday night or a Sunday night. I think it was. Uh, that Washington ended the Eagles' undefeated streak last year. And they played good the first two weeks of the season. Last, I mean, uh, the other day against Buffalo, they got behind the ball, the eight ball, and then Sam Howell started trying to do too much, and the, the turnover snowballed on him. So for the Eagles, we need the same recipe. Force Sam Howell to try to beat you throwing the football. Again, he's only started four games in his career. But if you don't force him, Eric enemy is doing a good job of allowing him to be a game manager and then giving him opportunities to be aggressive down the field. We got to make sure we take advantage of that. And from a defensive standpoint, Washington still has issues with their offensive line. They can't protect Sam Howell. has been sacked 19 times already. They have to get after him defensively and offensively. We just got to continue to build off what we've been doing. The Eagles haven't put together a complete game offensively i'm expecting that this sunday i think buffalo showed some things that they can take advantage of with this uh red skin red skin, this commander's defense <laughs> <laughs> i always a pleasure chopping it up with you man i appreciate your time anytime big fella and by the way i don't know who's your tailor you look pretty good brother i can hook you up I, I, I'll be, <laughs> I can hook you up. I'll be, we'll be. I think I know who your tailor is. I think I know who it is. <laughs> All right. Up next. Okay. Up next, Brad Feinberg is here for your fantasy embedding fix for week four. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the anticipation of another face card, the thrill of an extra spin, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's all your favorite games at your fingertips. Plus, get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're down in the first 24 hours. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. This is Seth Joyner, top analyst for the birds. I've also analyzed the best auto dealerships, and I drive a Davis Honda. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Over 300 cars available. And right now, get rates as low as 0.9% at Davis Honda in Burlington. Plus, you'll get two years of free oil changes on every new and used Davis Honda vehicle. See why Davis Honda continues to win outstanding awards for sales and service, including the highest award from Honda, the President's Award. Get to Davis Honda in Burlington. Fall into savings at Davis Honda. Welcome to Bridgeview Partners, where IT and business innovation merge. We're not just another tech company. We're your strategic partner in navigating the ever-evolving digital landscape. Our team of experts tailors cutting-edge solutions to fit your unique needs, and ensuring your success is our top priority. Elevate your business with Bridgeview Partners. Discover the power of partnership and tech innovation today. Contact us now to experience the difference. Bridgeview Partners, where innovation meets excellence.
J.P. Mascaro and Sons is a family-owned, locally operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all, an experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. Welcome back. As we approach the end of the first quarter of this NFL season, Brad Feinberg drops back to help us figure out the unpredictable start to this season on the fantasy slash betting front. Brad, welcome. Good afternoon, Seth. I'm looking forward to a great NFL weekend, and uh, hopefully it'll be a, uh, a good, prosperous weekend for all. All right, so let's jump into it. On the fantasy front, who is your overvalued player in defenses for week four? Well, Seth, I'm going to start out with overrated quarterback Lamar Jackson. Now, do I think Lamar Jackson's a good player? Absolutely, Seth. But let's look who he's going against. The Cleveland Browns defense has allowed one touchdown in three games. They're putting up, dare I say, Seth, Eagle stats from back in the day when you and Clyde Simmons and Jerome Brown and Reggie White were dominating. They're putting up that kind of defensive performances at least through three weeks. So Lamar Jackson, Seth, being priced as a third highest priced quarterback against that defense, no thank you. Then I'm going to go, Seth, to running back, James Conner. Now, James Conner's played very well, Seth. He's kind of been the focal point of this Arizona team that's played a lot better than I was expecting. Had two really heartbreaking losses and that huge upset one over Dallas. But going against arguably the best run defense in football in San Francisco, a game there are two touchdown underdog in. I'm expecting him not to get as many carries this week because I'm not expecting him to be in this particular game. Do not like James Conner. He's still being priced as a top 10 running back. Wide receiver, Seth. Mike Evans. This one is easy for me. Now, I think Mike Evans is a great player, but his kryptonite has been Marshawn Lattimore. Lattimore has owned Evans in this matchup. Evans, again, a good player. Hate this matchup. Don't need to pay up for him this week. And then defensively, I'm going to say the Steelers. Look, I like them fine, Seth, but they're the fourth highest priced defense. And I'm not sure if you've watched, guys, everyone watching C.J. Stroud. Uh, C.J. Stroud's played really, really well. I think he's a more than competent quarterback. And I don't think being priced as the fourth highest defense, a little too rich for my blood, I'm fading the Steelers. Okay, so conversely, who are you excited about player-wise and defense-wise this week? Well, I'm going to start quarterback, Seth. And I've been hard on this guy, Deshaun Watson. But again, real life and fantasy could be two (laughs) different things. What I like about Deshaun Watson is he runs and I have his legs. And now without Nick Chubb, I think this team's going to have to pass a lot more. We saw it last week against Tennessee. They didn't really rely at all much on the run with Jerome Ford and Kareem Hunt. I think Deshaun Watson's going to have a lot of pass attempts. And plus, I love the fact he can get in with his legs. Being priced out of the top 10, I think Watson's a screaming by against a very, in my opinion, average Ravens defense. Next, running back, Zach Moss. Look, we're going back to the well with this guy, Seth. Why not? 30 carries last week, three rushes, uh, basically on the field with every single snap. We want volume. That is the key when we're doing fantasy sports. We want as many touches as possible. This guy has as many touches as he can handle against a you know, decent Ram Stevens, but I certainly wouldn't say great. Still not being priced uh, as an elite workload. And is, I'm sorry, at least, price, at least priced. I don't get it. Love Zach Moss. Wide receiver wise, I'm going to go with Michael Thomas here. Interesting. I'm not expecting Derek Carr to play this week. Then when Jameis Winston came in the game, he force-fed the ball to Thomas. Thomas got four of his catches in the fourth quarter when Jameis was in. Thomas has 18 catches, Seth, through three games. Seems like he's healthy to me again, uh, being priced not very that high, not even in the top 35. I think you could argue he's right there with Olave. I think he's a good bargain. And then defensively, Seth, look, we talked about the Browns before. I'm going to talk about them again. They're only the, they're the seventh cheapest defense, having allowed one touchdown all season, Love their defense, love their price. Give me the Browns. 
Lastly, Brad, I'm feeling kind of lucky this week. I need a little four-way parlay, <laughs> a line bet, an under-over, <laughs> teaser, whatever um, for the week. Well, Seth, I like that you're feeling lucky. Okay, I'm going to start off with an over-under with you. And this is a game you're going to have to hold your nose on, but I like the over. The Bears versus the Broncos. The over-under in this game is right around 45 and a half, 46, Seth. I like the over. Look, when two te- bad teams play like this, I actually think points tend to be scored, and these have certainly been two bad teams. And look, if you're Justin Fields right now having to play a great Chiefs defense, which he had to play, and then he, against Tampa Bay, who was a decent defense, now – Denver's defense has been right up there as the worst in the league. He's, in my opinion, going to feel released and get out of jail free card here in this defense. And then also from Denver, now they've got to play a bad Bears defense. I think both these teams get over 20 points. I'm not saying they're two good teams, Seth, but I think both teams will score at least 20 points. Give me order for 45 and a half points in that game. Next, Seth, I'm going to take the Buffalo Bills against a team I love. I love the Dolphins, but like this spot very, very much for Buffalo. Buffalo traditionally has owned Miami. They're at home. You know, it's funny, Seth, before the year, this line would have been closer to five and a half. We're getting three points off because of Miami's hot start. And let's face it, they haven't beaten the best teams. I think Buffalo is far and away the best team they've played. Uh, I think the Bills win this game. Key thing here, it's less than a field goal. Give me Buffalo lane two and a half. And we've been talking about fading Lamar Jackson, taking the Browns defense. So you know I got to like the Browns lane two and a half here. I just think they're the better team, Seth. And we have a Baltimore team that was missing seven starters last week. Mm. When you're missing seven starters, and I know coach speak next man up, but look, you know, when great players are out or good players are out, it's still not that easy. I think the Browns are the better team. I think they win this game by at least three. And then lastly, Seth, Saints minus two and a half uh, against the Buccaneers. I just think the Saints are the clearly the better team here. Even if Jameis Winston plays, I get that's a downgrade from Derek Carr, but I was, I'm was i not that impressed with this Tampa Bay team having watched them Monday night against the Eagles. Baker Mayfield on the road, eh. I think New Orleans is the better team offensively, defensively. Give me the Saints at a cheap price. He's Brad Feinberg. Best bets is where you'll find him. Brad, thanks as always. Brad's best bets. That's right. Thank you, you sir. got it. All right. Coming up, my closing thoughts and predictions for Sunday's NFC matchup as Washington comes to town to face the 3-0 Philadelphia Eagles at Lincoln Financial Field. J.P. Mascaro & Sons is a family-owned, locally operated solid waste service company in business for over 60 years. You've seen the red trucks with the blue elephant that symbolizes strength and reliability. Mascaro is different than other national brands. Like the birds, Philadelphia is home. They'll take care of all your waste removal needs. They have it all, an experienced workforce, state-of-the-art equipment, a cutting-edge recycling center, and their own disposal facilities. Call 888-MASCARO or visit jpmascaro.com. At Mandrakia Law, we win big personal injury cases, but we always tell our clients up front that those cases almost always hinge on how much insurance coverage people or companies have. At Mandrakia Law, we don't sell insurance, but we're experts at helping our clients make sure they have the right insurance to protect their businesses and families. Do you have the right insurance? Most people don't. For a consultation, visit mmattorneys.com or call 610-584-0700. Mandrakia Law, aggressive attorneys who get the job done. At Revolution X, we know that fortunes are made in times of uncertainty. Are you selling your investment real estate? Are you interested in deferring your tax with a 1031 exchange? At RevX, we're experts in 1031 exchange planning and the use of passive real estate options using DSTs. Not in the midst of an exchange and want to invest in real estate but don't know where to start? Revolution X has institutional grade real estate options for any size investor right now. Set up a consultation at RevXWealth.com. RevX, defer the tax maximize the gain. If you understand that success is built on trusted relationships and dependable performance, MidPen Bank is the right bank for you. We're on a mission to prove that the right bankers can make a big difference. We work harder, we get things done, and we're in your corner. With financial centers strategically located throughout the greater Philadelphia region and new locations in central New Jersey, we're ready to bring you the best in commercial and personal banking. Call or visit us today to connect with a professional MidPen banker. Member FDIC. Go Eagles! When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the energy of being all in, the passion of a perfect parlay, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's another opportunity to win big every day of the week. Sign up for Bet Parks and get a welcome offer today. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. 
Bet Parks. Welcome back. I must admit that I had some reservations about this Bucks game. Not that I was worried that they lose, but I wanted to see with 10 to 11 days to prepare and adjust and strategize, how would Nick Sirianni and Brian Johnson adjust to how Bill Belichick and Brian Flores were playing this offense? I found it interesting that the decision was made to move or abandon somewhat the read option and the RPO, with the exception of the tush push on third and fourth downs and goal line situations, Hertz ran the ball extremely sparingly. They left that up to the running backs, DeAndre Swift and Kenneth Gainwell combined for 30 carries between the two of them. When you have the best offensive line in the National Football League, why not use that to your advantage and allow them to do the dirty work? Although Hertz made a few bad decisions, the passing game looked much improved. A.J. Brown should be placated, given that he got the lion's share of the targets, 14 out of a total of 37 pass attempts. Defensively, the defensive tackles are playing as good as any defense in the National Football League right now. The two former Bulldogs look unblockable, and the rest are motivated to keep up and up their game. I'm still concerned about our defensive ends and edge rushes. I knew that 70 regular season sacks last year was an anomaly. But if this group can get it going and the secondary can get and find a way to stay healthy, this defense could evolve into one, if not the best defensive units in the NFL. As one of only three remaining undefeated teams, it's imperative that they keep pace with the 49ers in the win-loss column, even if it's only week four. The importance of winning the division and securing home field is paramount. I get it. There's a long way to go, but they've got to stay focused on getting better each week and winning games and beating the teams that they're supposed to beat. It's getting to that point of the season where it's getting harder and more difficult for teams to hide who they are and what they want to be. With four games under your belt, you are who you are. There are few wrinkles that you can add to mask your true identity. At this point, it's your best versus my best. That being said, the Eagles' best is far better than the Commanders' best. Yet, it must be proven each and every week. Although Washington's defensive front four poses some problems, I believe that the Birds' O and D lines will dominate the line of scrimmage again. I expect the Eagles to come away with yet another victory on Sunday afternoon, 27-13. to 13. That's the show for this week. Thanks for tuning in. Next week, we'll look back on the Washington game and look ahead to the matchup, a trip out west to take on the Los Angeles Rams. God bless and good night, Philadelphia.